Well, from the Council on Aging, today we have Jenna Chamchavlet. Did I pronounce that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. You are the uh, Reconnect Outreach and Education Manager with the Council on Aging, right? Yes, I am. So what is uh, mainly your focus as far as the Reconnect Outreach? Sure. What's that so part of it? The Council on Aging is a nonprofit that's been around since 1973. We're 43 mm -hmm. years old. And Reconnect has been with the Council on Aging for about five years now. And it's a preventative mental health program that helps older adults 60 and over okay. be reintegrated into the community. Okay. So this would be. Um, when you say reintegrated, does that mean uh, that uh, maybe they were living in some kind of special care for a while? Or? It could be. You know, the reason why a person is isolated can vary. Okay. Uh, it could be because they have family members who are busy at work mm -hmm. on a daily basis. It could be that they are they are new to the community. It could be that they're experiencing okay. some type of losses, whether it's a loss of a loved one or a loss of a physical ability of some sort. Okay, very good. So we brought along some slides today, mm -hmm. and uh, we've talked about this before, but this is just m some of the many things that the Council on Aging Has. specializes in, uh -huh. right? So, so Reconnect is one of the eight programs mm -hmm. that we have, and Reconnect is a case management program. So it really is about helping an individual understand what barriers they might be facing and also understand what resources are available to them. Okay, as far as uh, the resources go, uh, I know you folks can uh, really help a lot with that. Um, and I think it's something that the Council on Aging, and you work with other agencies and things like that as well, but mm -hmm. it's fantastic. So talking about some some of the uh, statistics on seniors. Uh, next slide here. Every 80 minutes, an older adult commits suicide. I mean, I really? Yes, and it's it's kind of scary to think that just in the time that we're sitting here, that we have someone who's impacted by depression mm -hmm. to where they would want to commit suicide. Now, as far as um, uh, people that are really impacted by this, is it is it mainly due to isolation? Would you um, think? Oh. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why individuals may feel the need to commit suicide, mm -hmm. but it's important that we're addressing the challenges that they're facing, not only with their mental health, but what their overall uh, quality of life is. Okay. And that's really the holistic part of the program is not only identifying where they're at with their quality of mm -hmm. life, but also just seeing, you know, what their day-to-day -day activities are, who okay. they're connected with, what their social support is like. Okay. Now, one in four older adults are affected by mental illness, including depression. And of course, I would say over the past um, maybe 10 years or so, depression in general for all age groups, I mean, right down to young children, has uh, really been looked into far more deeper than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I don't think that people are aware of how prevalent depression is in the community. Mm -hmm. And just because a person is depressed doesn't mean they're weak. It doesn't mean that they should be secluded from others. It really just means that they need some additional support. OK. And 80% of the cases are treatable. Now, are they treatable with medication? Are they treatable just because of an out your outreach program that uh, you connect with them? It could be a combination of both okay. of those things. So it depends on the level of depression. Mm -hmm. uh, some people may have more clinical depression right. where they Which might course, need medication. Yeah. Uh, but if we have an individual who maybe is experiencing depression due to some type of life experience that's happening, then our program might be definitely a beneficial service for them because we can help identify maybe what that trigger is and help identify solutions for them. Okay. And of course, I would say one of the primary triggers could be a loss of a spouse, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as your early intervention services, tell us about that. 
So what we do in the ReConnect program is we really are trying to get them connected with specific resources. So let's say housing mm -hmm. is a barrier for them or transportation. We also see some barriers with getting assistive devices or seeking out counseling services. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we go into the person's home and we identify what those barriers are. Can a person right. does need help with um, going to a counseling service that's nearby for them or someone mm -hmm. that goes into the home? Or d can a person benefit from going to a grief, grief and loss support group on a regular okay. basis if they've lost somebody? Or maybe it's a little bit more lighthearted in that, than that. Maybe the person likes to garden mm -hmm. and they just want to get out and get some sun and be with other peers and have some social activities. Uh, in our program, we provide a lot of different activities or workshops shops throughout the county. So those classes range from computer classes. We also do electronic device classes where we're teaching individuals how to use their smartphones, mm -hmm. iPads. Uh, we do water aerobics. We have balance and mobility classes. So we try to make it fun and enjoyable for the person as well. And that's a good point you brought up, gardening or whatever it might be. Sometimes mm -hmm. that loneliness and, and depression is because they no longer feel they can go do just the things that bring them simple enjoyment, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Maybe once or twice a week, it gives them something to look forward to and be productive and uh, creative, right? Mm -hmm. Another, and that's uh, exactly it. Art is probably one of our most popular classes. Mm -hmm. uh, they really love to draw and paint. We actually have a jewelry making class as well that they really enjoy. Um, but another component you mentioned just being productive is we actually have a peer mentor program as part of the ReConnect program. Okay. And that's an opportunity for participants who have received services from us once they graduate to volunteer okay. and support another person that might be in the program. So they've already been through the services, they know what the experience is like, they know what kind of support and help the volunteers yeah. can be, and then they have that opportunity if they'd like to, to be that person for another. Yeah, definitely, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a great way to go. And you're helping somebody else, but you're helping yourself mm -hmm. as well, because again, you have something that you can feel productive about. Exactly. So as far as people taking advantage of this, uh, we have your number on the screen here and the website, but for, you know, obviously it takes somebody to have that first initiative to be able to contact you, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's the first step. And um, I would say that's a lot of time the hardest thing mm -hmm. for people because in a way you're, kind of a, you might have to admit to yourself, yeah, I need some help. And you know what, it's not help because you're, uh, you may be doing uh, poorly or whatever it might be. It's, it's the type of help that can really benefit your life and then you can go on and benefit others. Exactly, and you know, everybody needs a little help sometimes. Yeah. And it's okay to be able to reach out and get that support. And I always try to tell people, you know, just give the, make the call, talk about the program, see if it's right for you. The worst that could happen is you could say, you know, this program really isn't the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you wouldn't have to receive services. But usually the case is when someone calls, they can see what different aspects of the program would be beneficial right. for them, and they, try, they can give the program a try. Yeah, and I encourage folks to do that because uh, again, maybe you're not even feeling depressed, but you, you're looking for something in your life that can get you back out there and meet people and uh, have a good time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Council on Aging can certainly help with that. Uh, website is easy, coaoc.org. If you forget that, just search Council on Aging Orange mm -hmm. County and you'll get everything you need. Uh, the phone number here that's on your slide is 714-352-8820 and they can really help you. Jenna, pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Thank you so much for yeah. having me today. And we'll be right back. Very good. Thank you. Did you know there are over 400,000 seniors in Orange County today? Over the next 10 years, that number will more than double. So where does a senior or family caregiver go for information? Turn to us at the Council on Aging of Orange County. 
We can help you navigate the aging experience, understand Medicare, and know where to turn when a crisis occurs. As a local nonprofit since 1973, we serve 275,000 seniors every year. The Council on Aging, helping seniors remain healthy, connected, and protected.